Hello everyone, my name is Dr. John Adam here with Positive Health, where we believe client education improves pet health. So you just got a new puppy or kitten for your birthday or Christmas or whatever occasion it might be, and now you're thinking, what do I do with this thing? In this video, I'm gonna go over some tips on what you need to do to take care of your new puppy or kitten that has joined your family. But before we get into the video, if you could kindly hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, for future informational content. The first thing you should do is take your new puppy or kitten immediately to see your veterinarian. An examination should be done as soon as possible to make sure your new furry family member is in tip top shape. And this is when you can ask all of your questions about your specific pet to your veterinarian that you may have. It is wise to create a list of questions beforehand and make sure to bring all your records given to you by the breeder or the shelter. Most veterinarians will have their own questions they will ask you and guide you in how to take care of your new child because that's basically what they are, is a child. During this first visit, your veterinarian may start or continue with vaccines that your pet may need. The vaccinations recommended will vary depending on where you live and what your pet will be more exposed to in your area, but there are what we call core vaccines that are universal anywhere you are. In dogs, these include the DA2PP vaccine, which is sometimes called your Form 1 vaccine, Bordetella, and rabies. For cats, there are the FERCP and FELV vaccines. The FELV vaccine is usually given after your kitten has been tested for feline leukemia and feline AIDS, or FIV. These vaccines are usually started at six to eight weeks of age and given in a series two to four weeks apart, depending on the vaccine. Your veterinarian should be able to provide a vaccine schedule on your first visit. Also during your first visit, your veterinarian will start or continue with deworming your puppy or kitten. Since parasites can be transmitted from the mother to the puppy, it is very important that this is done even if your pet does not show any signs of parasitism at the time. My next tip is to start your pet on heartworm prevention. Since the instance of heartworm is increasing everywhere, this is a crucial uh, thing to do no matter where you are. Prevention is usually started at six months of age and can be given as an injection that lasts six or 12 months or as a monthly oral medication. I will link one of our previous videos down in the description below for more information on heartworm disease and why it is so important to have your pet on a preventative. Another important decision for your new puppy or kitten is the food to start them on. You want to make sure it is a good quality and has the AFCO compliance statement on the bag. If you have a large breed puppy, please make sure it is formed for a large breed since the protein and calcium phosphorus ratio are different than their small breed counterparts. And if this is changed, can contribute to certain orthopedic disease if not balanced properly in the diet. Please stay away from grain-free diets or designer foods since many are linked to heart disease in our cats and dogs. Feed your puppies and kittens about four times a day because they have a tough time controlling their blood sugar at a young age and then tr transition to twice daily at about four to five months of age. With cats, I prefer meals versus free feeding since we can better control the intake later in life. Puppies and kittens should be transitioned to adult food starting around seven, eight months of age. Feeding puppy and kitten food for too long can also cause issues such as orthopedic issues and obesity. Please also be careful in selecting treats for your new pet since this is adding calories. This is important for puppies and kittens. Make sure they are low in calories such as cornflakes, or you can even use the kibble from their diet as treats. Do not give them bones or rawhides to chew on since they can break their teeth. Instead, I love Kongs for puppies. These are rubber toys that you can hide treats in to keep them busy for a while. Socialization and training for puppies is key during this time. Basic obedience training and socialization can be done after the first set of vaccinations. Just make sure that when the training is done that other puppies are screened for infectious diseases and have their vaccine records before they are allowed to interact with other puppies. Crate training can also help give your puppy and kitten a safe place to be at home. 
for puppies make sure they are created at night outside of your bedroom so they cannot see or hear you unless you don't like to sleep much at night crate training for kittens is also important so that they are comfortable in it for you whenever you have to transport them to the veterinarian or anywhere else potty training is a little easier in kittens than puppies kittens are usually good at using their litter box after being shown where they are Try using an open box at first and also lower edges as well. For puppies, make sure to take them out often or provide pads. When they do go in the proper area, make sure to praise them or give them treats depending on what your pet prefers. Another important training for your puppies and kittens is to get them used to being touched. So mess with them, mess with their paws, mess with their ears, their mouth, their tails, so that when you have to give them medication, or trim their nails, they're not as sensitive in being handled in those areas. You should also have your friends and family engage with them in the same way so they are used to being touched by other people, like when introducing someone new or getting them groomed. Make sure to start brushing their teeth now so that you can have an easier time of it when their adult teeth come in. For more information on your pet's dental health, please click on the link on the description below. If your pet is of age, please get them spayed or neutered. This is not only uh, prevention for accidental new puppies and kittens in your family, but it also prevents certain diseases like infections and cancers. This is usually done at six months of age, but there is evidence that certain breeds, like large breed dogs, can benefit from waiting until 18 months of age. Please ask your veterinarian when the proper time is to fix your puppy or kitten. Since they are already under anesthesia, this is also a great time to microchip them. This is very important, even with your cat, so that if they do get lost, they can be returned to you if brought to a clinic or a shelter. Plus, it validates that this is your pet just in case someone tries to take them, which unfortunately does happen. Finally, a very important tip when owning a new furry family member is to get insurance or create a separate bank account that you deposit funds to monthly for medical expenses. Taking care of your pet is not cheap and bills can be upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars each visit. Having insurance and or a fund for them when you need to take them to the vet can help decrease the stress of dealing with a sick puppy or kitten and allow you to get the necessary care quickly. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or have any future topics you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment below. And once again, hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much and see you soon. Ha, ha, ha.